G'day guys, I'm Pyrotech, and you're watching more of my thoughts and opinions on the Halo 5 Guardians beta. You're currently watching gameplay from Slayer on Eden. First off, I would like to retract my statement about the Hydra I made in my previous video. After seeing some videos of how the weapon can be used and trying it out myself, I feel my statement about the Hydra being useless is inaccurate. It's possible to use the Hydra like an artillery and create some interesting hook shots by shooting around structures or up in the air. You can also keep locked onto players even after zooming out for a few seconds, which I was unaware of when I first tried using it. I do feel, however, that the weapon is extremely situational. It seems to be a weapon more suited for big team battle rather than arena maps due to the fact that the weapon won't work well indoors or in confined spaces. I tried some interesting angles on regret, and while I managed to get off a few cool kills, I also wasted a decent amount of ammo. Whether or not I hit a target seemed to have a good deal of luck involved. Without an audio or visual cue that you've been locked on, I feel like the weapon doesn't offer a lot of counterplay options, as line of sight is the most important tool in your defense in a first person shooter. If you're unable to hide behind a structure for cover, what defense do you actually have? If you've never heard of counterplay, I've included a great video explaining it in the description below. As a clarification, when I talk about auto aim, I'm talking about auto aim in the classic sense that bullets will hit enemies that are close to your crosshair, not the aim assist that helps your reticle stick to targets. I know a lot of people can become confused over these terms, so just keep in mind that I'll be using the original definition of auto aim. One of the most annoying features in the beta so far has been the kill cam. I understand the kill cam is buggy and incomplete at the moment, but I still don't think it's necessary in Halo. The kill cam is required in Call of Duty due to many weapons killing instantly from long range. Without the kill cam in Call of Duty, many players will become frustrated when they're unsure how they died. In Halo, apart from the sniper which leaves a very obvious trail, you'll generally have time to figure out where you're being shot from before you die. The kill cam doesn't solve any gameplay issues, it's simply added to look cool. There are several important issues with replacing the classic death camera with the kill cam. First off, there is no audio or visual cue of how long until you respawn. This is an extreme oversight. The respawn beeps are an important part of Halo. Anyone that has ever walked into a Halo land will finally remember the constant sound of respawn beeps all around them. It's an important audio cue to get ready and to know the instant you're back in the action. I feel removing the respawn beeps from Halo is taking away a large part of what's left of Halo's identity. Secondly, the kill cam removes important information from your screen. If I get a kill of a grenade as I die, I can't tell if I've killed the player or not as the text disappears from my screen. When I respawn, I have no way of knowing if the player is still in the same area or not. Third, I feel like the kill cam takes me away from the action. If I'm in a firefight with my teammates, I'd prefer to continue spectating the fight after I die to see if my teammates are able to clean up my kills. And finally, it removes an important part of communication from the game. Many skilled players in Halo would use their death as an opportunity to watch the area and call out enemies. Players could choose to chill out for the next 5-10 to 10 seconds, or use the time to communicate for other teammates. I found the kill cam music to become incredibly aggravating after hearing it so many times. It feels completely out of place in the Halo game. On that note, the music that starts to play towards the end of the game should go, or there should be an option to turn off music and multiplayer altogether. I want to listen for enemies coming around the corner, and not the same music over and over again. As someone with a hearing impairment, any unnecessary sound unrelated to the gameplay can hurt my performance. I know I've mentioned the aim down sight animation a few times now, however there's another problem with it that I forgot to mention in previous videos. The long aim down sight animation gives an enormous advantage to a player that gets a first shot in a long range firefight. Once you're knocked out of scope, it's incredibly hard to zoom back in and exchange shots. I found that I had to back out of any fight if I got shot first as the auto aim won't kick in at long range without zooming in. I don't like the addition of ground pound. In all my games I've been killed by it maybe once or twice and I haven't found a useful situation to use it in myself. I feel it's far too situational and it takes away the ability to crouch mid jump and to gundy hop during firefights. There are already plenty of close quarters combat options available. With shoulder charge, thrusters, melee, sword and assassinations, I don't believe the ground pound ability serves any purpose other than to look cool. Thrusters I'm torn on. This may sound like heresy to other Halo and purists out there, however I believe the thrusters can offer some serious competitive potential if they're implemented right. Unreal Tournament 2003 added the ability to dodge jump, and I believe it opened up a lot more options for player movement and some clever map design compared to the original Unreal. Thrusters open up the possibility for some cool outplays, better strafing and some neat trick jumps. The problem with thrusters right now is that it can't be used offensively. 
While thrusting, you lose the ability to shoot in melee, which means the ability is used defensively instead. Where you already have sprinting to use defensively, the game doesn't need any more defensive abilities. Shoulder charge is okay, however I feel the long animation punishes players for using it when a simple beatdown would have done the job. Perhaps shoulder charge could be reserved for holding down the melee button like the assassination, otherwise you'd just perform a normal melee with the normal melee damage. I really like the addition of the perfect medal and a couple of the others, but there's far too many other pointless medals in the game. Medals like Last Bullet and Distraction are almost purely luck based and handing out attendance medals to everyone makes all the medals meaningless. I shouldn't have 40 medals at the end of a game, I'd much rather have 5 that were actually difficult to earn. Well, that's about all I can think of at this point in time. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe, or check out my channel for other Halo 5 beta videos. If you've got any questions or comments, please leave them below. I'll have new content coming out when I get a chance to play the new maps in the coming playlist update. Cheers.